In your car, listen to Newswatch 16 on WKRZ AM 1340. Proud to serve Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania. This is WNEP 16, the news station. Now, Nolan Johannes, Karen Hart, Pilot Jack Rulin in Skycam 16, Chief Meteorologist Tom Clark, and Joe Zone on sports. This is News Watch 16. Good evening. We asked for it, and we got it. Boy, did we get it. Last week, we were all wondering what happened to spring. Well, this week, we skipped right to summer. Yes, we're having a heat wave. That old ball of fire in the sky is really heating up northeastern and central Pennsylvania. If you've been outside at all, you know the past few days have been scorchers. But if you like these people in Scranton, being outside is better than inside, where it's just too hot to handle. Yeah, it's those lazy, hazy days of summer that are here a bit early this year. Somehow kids seem to enjoy it most of all. What better way to cool off than jump into Harvey's Creek? So, how hot did it get today? Did we break a record? Well, our meteorologist, Tom Clark, has been keeping an eye on that weather and the thermometer. Tom, where are you right now? Okay, I am poolside in Wilkesbury, Karen and Nolan. Uh, feels good outside now. We came close to the record high today. We missed it by four degrees. The record high was 93, we got to 89, but it was 94 in Allentown, that tied a record, and it was 90 out in Williamsport today. Now, a little bit later on, I'm going to tell you how very hot it's going to get over this weekend and whether or not we're going to break any records either tomorrow or Sunday. And also, I'll have the uh, water temperature of the pool here, and it looks mighty fine from this point. I can't wait to get in, guys. There are those of us who welcome the heat, others find it uncomfortable and, in some cases, unbearable. Newswatch 16's Bob Reynolds says you may not realize it, but the heat can also be a killer. When well, the temperature gets that high and you can feel the humidity closing in on you, for most of us, it's just a matter of uh, inconvenience to beat the heat. But for others, it could mean the difference between life and death. In, in the elderly, this could precipitate uh, a heart attack or shock, similar situations, which could be devastating. Just about anywhere in northeastern and central Pennsylvania, the air was so thick you can almost reach out and grab a handful. The senior citizens we talk to know how dangerous the heat can be, but they also know something else. I enjoy the heat. I enjoy it. Oh, I love it. Like, like the heat? I'd rather have it than winter. Why is that? because it's warm, it's nice, you can dress like this, you don't have to be all buckled up, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I'm aware of it, but I don't worry about it. I mean, uh, I have, uh, I've never had a heart condition in, you know, of any kind, so I just take it easy, that's all. I mean, that's all I can tell you. <laughs> just roll with the punches. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> the best advice some doctors have for the elderly is, enjoy the heat if you can, take it slow, drink plenty of liquids, and that way the next trip you make won't be in an air-conditioned ambulance. Bob Reynolds, Newswatch 16, Lackawanna County. Of course, there's another way to keep cool, and that's to jump in a pool. But since our heat wave has come a little early, not too many are open as yet. This one is, and many took advantage of it today at Luzerne County's Moon Lake Park in Plymouth Township. The pool opened just today, and evidently many people knew about it and found a great way to escape the almost 90-degree weather. News Watch 16 continues with a local woman who went to Harrisburg and won. Plus, we'll tell you about how gas, tires, and engines brought a family together again. Those stories and more as News Watch 16 continues. At WNEP, it's people that count. People who care about Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania. We've known our people are the best, and now the Associated Press confirmed it with these awards. Best Enterprise Reporting, Dan Fiorucci. Best Photographer, Steve Smallwood. Best Feature Reporting, Mike Stevens. Best Editorials, Eldon Hale. Best Newscast and Best News Department, WNEP-TV. WNEP-TV 16. We're proud to serve Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania. There's a track in the Poconos that'll see heavy traffic this weekend from stock car racing's top drivers. But for one Connecticut family, seeing the Van Scoy 500 is really special. Newswatch 16's Bob Costantini tells us about the team behind one of the drivers who chipped in to bring the family here. 
His mother died of cancer 14 months ago. Then, two days before last Christmas, 11-year-old Billy Carniani of Connecticut suffered a stroke, which left him barely able to speak. Al Carniani and his son owe more than $50,000 to hospitals, but they and a family friend have been flown into Mount Pocono Airport to attend Sunday's Diamond Mine 500. The Die Guard Racing Team, with driver Bobby Allison, is paying for the trip and has set up a fund to help the Carnianis pay their bills. For total strangers to reach out and help people like us, we're just normal people. Um, for them to put everything together that, like they have, it's, it's really, uh, it's great. It makes you feel good. Billy looks inside Bobby Allison's <laughs> private plane and there's no doubt who his hero is. Yeah. Right. Who's your favorite driver? Name the number. 22. Car number 22. 22. Bobby. Allison. All right, Bobby Allison. Yeah. This is Billy's first chance to see a major stock car race. In the pits, he meets many famous drivers. Bobby Allison, who met Billy this morning in Connecticut, has already left the track. But Billy gets a good look at his car. It's been a big day for young Billy Carmiani, but it'll be an even bigger day Sunday if this car, number 22, belonging to Bobby Allison, is first under the checkered flag. Bob Costantini, Newswatch 16 at the Pocono Speedway. The Vanscoy 500 also means more tourists and more money for businesses. Newswatch 16's Marisa Burke reports businesses around the Pocono racetrack are geared up for the crowds. It'll be like this for John McElroy all weekend. Customers in and out of his beverage store located close to the Pocono racetrack. McElroy and other businessmen in the area look forward to what they call a Pocono weekend. The overflow crowd of visitors and race fans means bucks, big bucks. Anytime Pocono International races uh, uh, come to the area, uh, my, my business must increase 100% uh, from over the regular business that I do year round. Pins and t-shirts dress up James DeLong's souvenir stand. Originally from Virginia, he follows the racing circuit and says Pocono is one busy spot. It's not like a madhouse, I guess you'd call it. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people here. They, they expect them to fix your 80,000 this year, I think, so a lot of people. So is it a busy time for you? Yeah. Now you would think most race fans would want to grab a quick hot dog or hamburger during the weekend. Not so, says Herc Meniatis. He runs a nearby restaurant that specializes in Greek cuisine. That's, uh, I mean, uh, more business, more people. That's helped a lot of it. Yeah. How, how does it help? That's a, uh, I can't tell you exactly, but this is more business. It's about two, three hundred percent more business if it's a big race. If, you, if I didn't have the race business, I wouldn't have the business. And at the campground surrounding the racetrack, the story is the same. Business booms on a weekend like this. As one campground manager tells me, the race guarantees a full house. Marisa Burke, Newswatch 16, Monroe County. In Harrisburg, 10 instant lottery grand prize finalists, three of them from our area, were trying for $1,000 per week for the rest of their lives. They gathered in the Capitol Rotunda for the drawing, and among them, Andrew Medvek of Luzerne County's Dallas, Arthur Gable of Wind Gap, Northampton County, and Mary Shovlin from Plains, Luzerne County. 59-year-old Medvek and 75-year-old Gable each won only $5,000, but Mrs. Shovlin was a bit luckier. She drew $15,000. <laughs> Nice. Only 5000 right? <laughs> Our chief meteorologist, Tom Clark, is outside enjoying all the sunshine. Well, Tom, it's uh, kind of hot outside, but it looks as though you're in the right place. Uh, Little risque there, Tom. Hey, this is the place to be, I want to tell you. <laughs> Thunder showers this weekend, I'll tell you when we come back. And also, the weatherman takes the plunge. Stay tuned. I'm Stan Laurel. And I'm Oliver Hardy. Join Jane and Chad tonight from Taney's Costume in Scranton for PM. What is it that makes Dynasty such a hot TV show? We're going to show you. It's the furs and diamonds. And then we'll meet somebody who's pretty over-enthusiastic. Well, maybe he's a little crazy. He's Crazy George, America's number one cheerleader. And in Williamsport, Gary Chrisman discovers that it's vacation time. That's tonight at 7 on WNEP-TV 16. Well, this is going to be a great weekend mm. for outdoor weather lovers. That's for sure. Racers have, of course, the Vanscoy 500, and flower lovers have the beginnings of the Laurel Blossom Festival in Carbon County. And Tom Clark has a nice-looking swimming pool there, and Tom, we'd love to come down and push you in. <laughs> I bet you would. I bet you. There's a lot of people here that would like to do that, too. I am poolside at the Master Host Inn, just off Route 115 in Wilkesbury. As you can see behind me, there's a pretty good crowd here today. 
And with what I see coming in this weekend, that crowd may triple by Sunday afternoon. Now, let's get to the current readings outside now. We have just some hazy sunshine in the west, and our temperature is 87 degrees. The humidity, 45%. It's noticeable. The wind, southwest at 11. Barometer falling. Air quality index today in Wilkes-Barre, 104. And that is considered unhealthful. Anybody with respiratory elements uh, should just take precautions in being outside on a day like today. Very humid, the air a bit dirty. 98 up there in uh, Scranton, that is considered moderate or fair. The high today was 89 degrees, and as you can see, only four from the all-time record high for the state, 93 degrees. The low last night, a mild and muggy 66. Record low, 38, my heavens, back in 1932. A shot there of Harvey's Creek in Plymouth Township, Luzerne County. That water must be kind of cold. Now there we go. We have the old Bermuda High off the southeast coast of the U.S., just off the Carolinas there, and that is stationary. It's anchored. It's not going anywhere for the next two and three days. The clockwise flow around that high, pumping up the hot, soupy air towards Pennsylvania. You just see some high cirrus clouds over the state there, those bright white clouds. No thunderstorms in the area tonight, and I don't think there's going to be many thunderstorms between now and Monday across northeastern and central Pennsylvania, just widely scattered. There is a front out in the Midwest, and that will probably get here along about Tuesday, as I see it now. Here's the forecast for tonight. Hey, the warmest night so far this year is underway. The low in South Branch, Bradford County, 67 degrees, 68 in Hawley. And let me say hi to all the boys and girls and teachers I spoke to today at Camp Watonka in Hawley. Good time, thanks for lunch. 70, Glen Lyon, 69 hometown, about 70 in Mifflinburg tonight. Now for tomorrow, hey, no surprise. Same old song and dance, temperatures once again near 90, probably a few degrees warmer tomorrow than what it was today because I expect brighter sunshine in the afternoon. Temperatures in the low 90s, as you can see here in Wilkes-Barre, 93, Stroudsburg, Elysburg, Jersey Shore, near 90 up there in Clark Summit. The southwest flow continues all day tomorrow. The health watch hasn't changed too much. Resistance to aches and pains high tomorrow with the above normal temperatures. Concentration, well, it's not going to be a very good day to think anyway. Take the day off. Okay, sunrise and sunset is 5.30. The sun sets now at 8.35. I'm getting hot now. Here we go. Warm tonight near 70. Hot tomorrow. Probably no thunderstorms. There's the high, the record high on the right there of 96. I'm predicting 93 tomorrow. 91 on Sunday, another hot day, maybe a late day thunder shower. 92, the record, we're going to come close. Monday, some thunderstorms likely, and Tuesday, uh, the front comes through, maybe a shower. And that's it. I've had it. This, this pool is heated, I understand. 81 degrees in the water. Here we go. Oh, he's got it made. <laughs> he had lunch this afternoon at camp, right? A swimming tonight. Oh, Boy. I'm telling you. And all I did I was know. mow my grass this morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, Joe's own is next with the McEnroe Connor showdown in the French Open and a look at tonight's Celtics Lakers game. Plus, a live report on the first day of the qualifying at the Vance Goy 500. Stay with us. River kayaking tomorrow. Well, our local meteorologist goes into pools, and our, our sports director will go out to the races tomorrow. I'll yeah. Bet, right? It's going to be more qualifying today. And you look at how hot that weather is. Unbelievable at Pocono this weekend. And about just about every big stock car gun in the country at Pocono trying to get into the field for Sunday's Van Scoy 500. They've just completed the first of two days of qualifying, and Jay Christopher has been up at Pocono all day. Jay, what happened today? Okay, thank you very much, Joe. Well, David Pearson came from back of the pack today to gain the pole position for the running in Sunday's Van Scoy Diamond Mine 500. He did it in a classic style in a Chevy number 12, and he did it with a speed of well over 150 miles per hour. Now, it was a classic run typical of the veteran NASCAR driver. Three others had the pole before Pearson. First, it was Bill Elliott, then Harry Gant, then Lake Speed, and finally Pearson. I followed Pearson to Gasoline Alley where I asked him if the late calm weather had anything to do with his fast run of the day. 
David, uh, when to have any uh, direct bearing on you taking that pole with uh, such good speed? Well, I didn't really know that I'd run quite, you know, that fast. I felt like I'd run pretty good, but uh, as far as the polling, and the weather, I guess, had a lot to do with it, because I drawed, uh, I think it was about 38, 35 or somewhere along there, and uh, of course that was late in the afternoon, and, and it had cooled off quite a bit, so I, I'm sure that that's uh, had a lot to do with it. How about now, uh, Pearson, in his setup of the car, set it for turn three. It's the configuration of the car because of the distinctive style here of the tri-oval. I also talked to Darrell Waltrip and Richard Petty about turn three, and they agreed. I talked to them about that earlier today. Well, it's a compromise, really. Uh, you got a big turn down here that's banked that uh, you kind of have to adjust for. You got two flat turns up on the other end up here. The main thing is to get out onto the front straightaway well. So I work on my car real hard to get through the third turn over here. If I'm leading the race, I want to get through that turn better than any of the rest of them because that's the one that leads to the checkered flag, and that's the one I want to be right for. If you had to just say, okay, which corner are you going to set the car up for, I'd probably set it up for the number three corner because it's real flat and you got a real long straightaway in front of you. And if you don't get through that corner good, you don't get down the long front stretch, and that means that they outrun you. So if I had to set up for one corner, that'd be it. But Altrip and Petty. So in the first row, it'll be David Pearson and Lake Speed. It'll be Harry Gant and Darrell Waltrip in row two. Row three will be Terry Labonte and Bill Elliott. Richard Petty will be in row four. Bobby Allison, the defending 1983 NASCAR champion, will be starting in the, on the inside of the seventh row. Live from Pocono International Raceway, I'm Jay Christopher. Joe? Okay, thanks very much, Jay. And by the way, tomorrow or Sunday, Petty goes for win number 200. More qualifying tomorrow. They'll try to complete that field. Also, a number of other events, including the Time Trans Am race featuring several local drivers. Race day is Sunday, and they're scheduled to go at 1 o'clock. Still one of my favorite sports matchups. John McEnroe, Jimmy Connors, they met today. Semifinals at the French Open, and Big John took Connors out rather easily. First set was a scorcher. McEnroe won 7-5. That seemed to take the win out of Connors' sails. McEnroe went on to win it. The next two sets, 6-1, 6-2. He will face number two seed, Yvonne Lindell, top of your screen, who beat Matt Wielander today in straight sets. In the women's semis, top-seeded Martina Navratilova had some problems with Anna Monlikova. Anna came out fast and won the first set 6-3, but Martina turned around in a big way, went on to win the next two sets 6-2, 6-2. She played Chris Everett Lloyd for the French title tomorrow. Celtics and Lakers resume their war tonight. The series is tied at two apiece, and they're back in Boston. This has been, at times, one of the best I've ever seen, and other times, one of the worst. How do you explain a 33-point Laker win and yet two overtime wins by the Celtics? Looking back at what's happened so far, the Lakers, by all rights, should be NBA champs. Those two overtime games they've lost, they threw away. Now it's a best two of three. The Celtics, with new inspiration, I think, have an advantage. Game five tonight, 9 o'clock. Phillies and Pirates going at it right now. Veteran Stadium, first game of a 12 Nighter Pirates lead a two to one. Lascano has hit a home run for the Phillies. More good stuff tonight. The first place and cool down Tigers are in Baltimore. And Sean Abner, who we saw Tuesday afternoon against Coughlin in the state playoff, signed on today with the Mets. He'll report to the Appalachian League. The Mets, who made the Mechanicsburg senior their top pick in the country, think he's the best player around. That's all of it, kid. Tonight, your best shot. I'll see you at 11 o'clock with baseball, basketball, and auto racing. Nice looking hat on Petty. Yeah, oh yeah, he, uh, he is uh, colorful <laughs> and successful. That's I like for that. sure. And your cameras will be there all weekend. Yes. Okay, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. If you believe in miracles, we have a little more proof of them in a moment. It's the story of a young man who fought back against the odds and is now headed to the stars. We'll tell you about it as News Watch 16 continues. from Scranton. I started my training in northeastern Pennsylvania seven years ago. And today I'm at Scranton's Nayog Park where I had my first bike race. And now I'm training for the 1984 Olympics. It take a lot of hard work and dedication to get to the Olympic Games, and we need your support. So please send your contribution to the United States Olympic Committee. And who knows, maybe you'll see me in Los Angeles next year. A public service of WNEP TV 16. The past three months have been long, trying months for Jim Motherscare, fighting the odds and returning to a normal life. And as Newswatch 16's Craig Stevens reports, Jim's fight and success have made him the Muncie miracle. 
You're looking at an outright miracle. 19-year-old Jim Mother's care of Muncie walking and taking part in his high school graduation practice. Now, the reason I say miracle is because Jim was hurt in a car crash back in February, a crash that killed another boy. He was in a coma for a month, and doctors said he was brain dead. They also said his spinal cord was so badly damaged he would never walk. But just look at him. His classmates and the entire town of Muncie have rallied around Jim. I think it's brought the town of Muncie together, you know, supporting someone and, you know, just giving their all for someone. Jim's mother truly believes her son's recovery is miraculous. We got one of the phone calls that no parent ever wants to get. And at that particular point, uh, we just prayed to God that his will be done and that we would be able to accept it in whatever form it might be. And we truly believe that it, that is what happened. But for Jim, there's a big future ahead. I'm planning on going to Boyne, Michigan to do a dinner theater that I was invited to do. And, that's, that, and then I'm going to go to California and hopefully on to Broadway and Hollywood. <laughs> Big ambitions. Yeah, really big, but I know if I can get through this, you know, and with all the support I've gotten from other people, I think I can really get through anything. Craig Stevens, Newswatch 16, Muncie. A miracle. And that's Newswatch 16 for this Friday. Be sure to join us tonight on the update when we'll take a look at the nightlife before that big race. For the team, thanks for being with us. Enjoy your evening.